For the Winds Productions presents A Simple Man's Brand Production In conjunction with Jay Hebert Studios And now, A Simple Take With Noah Foster Two thousand twenty two. One of the most polarizing years ever in the history of the industry. We all come to know, love, rant, engage, and communicate with simply at its forefront, known as professional wrestling. And I am just a simple man and a lifelong fan. As I look at all things wrestling, shout out, of course, to my ATW family, ATW for life. And so here I am with all of you, mere hours away from the conclusion of 2022, to give you my final civil take of the year on the industry. So hello, everybody who watched this whenever you may, whether it's in 2022 or 2023. Welcome to the Simple Man brand. This is your first time. And for those who don't know, I am a simple man, the simple man. And my name is Noah Foster. And honestly, I'm just here to give you a simple take away in my aspects on all things wrestling to a degree. For at least the major companies, things I've seen, things that have really piqued my eye, things that I might expect and hope for in 2023 as well. So without further ado, as I like to keep things brief and simple too in the intro, let's get right into it. So let's go ahead and first talk about the WWE, shall we? Who would have thought before we left this plane of existence that we would see Vincent Kennedy McMahon step down as the chairman of this company, head of creative, no longer in the driver's seat? In the later half of 2022, we see now Triple H has truly changed the game and owns the freaking place, it seems. We saw the returns, the likes of Tegan Knotts, Cass Ray, Johnny Gargano, Dexter Loomis, Mia Yim, just to name a few, including the Good Brothers. I will say this for what it's worth when it came to WWE. I thought the Royal Rumble was interesting how it kicked things off for the year. And the constant, of course, has been the bloodline with the Usos and Roman Reigns at the uh, forefront. And then Ronda Rousey. Uh, polarizing or not, you put that wherever you want. She's been a constant since showing up back in the WWE, back at the uh, World Rumble. When I think about my favorite show this year, I think for me it was Survivor Series War Games. Not only with the fact they made Survivor Series matter again, where brand warfare is pretty much a non-existent thing anymore in this ecosystem, but it truly put a cap on what I think has been the story of WWE 2022 from a superstar standpoint, and that is Sami Zayn. Truth be told, the whole bloodline thing happened after WrestleMania, so it wasn't the whole year per se. But Sami Zayn has become the most influential character we have seen this year in WWE. Now being part of the bloodline, finally gaining trust with both uh, Jimmy and Jey Uso. But we've seen lately how Roman Reigns is looking at the perspective of fan reception and wondering right now, are they acknowledging Sami Zayn more than him? As we saw on the final SmackDown, it was Sami Zayn that, of course, got pinned by the only shadow that has fought him since literally his whole career, and that is Kevin Owens. So, for me, I sum up the 2022 like this. The Bloodline are indeed the ones they have owned the entire year. Bar none. It's interesting to see Charlotte Flair back, where the women's division truly has come down to Charlotte Flair and... uh. Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown side of things. Why they try to seem to get some more shine and maybe have some more, I feel like, trust in or stock into Raquel Rodriguez. Only time will tell if Ron gets better. Uh, and of course, the Raw side of things, Bianca Belair has truly been the EST of WWE. She has owned the year. Interesting now that Bailey's back in the uh, forefront and now you have Bailey versus Becky, two of the horsewomen of my NXT. So I do find that rather um, curious how far that program might go too. And with the constant idea of these more character developments and maybe some other returns and WWE trying to break down their own forbidden ways, not a forbidden door. We'll talk more about that with a different company. I, I will say this. WWE, I feel like, is in a better state, not only from a politics standpoint, but from a creative standpoint. It does seem like there is higher morale. It does seem like there is more of a focus on more character development, 
especially with Bray Wyatt back, and we still are figuring out who the hell Uncle Howdy is. But I look at WWE uh, like this. In 2023, I feel Roman Reigns is finally going to lose one, if not both, championships. I feel Cody Rhodes is going to fulfill his dream. I feel the Usos are now the longest reigning modern day WWE Tag Team Champions. They are going to lose their titles to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And what poetic justice would that be for these two friends, rivals for life, pretty much have done it all in the uh, WWE uh, to a degree. And why Sami Zayn has not won a major championship since NXT singles wise, besides the Nail Championship. I feel the Tag Team Championship win with Kevin Owens being the most important for his entire WWE career. So simply put, and shout out to Seth Rollins. What a workhorse this year. Good grief. Cody Rhodes becomes champion. Roman Reigns finally loses one of those titles, at least, if not both. And Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn become the tag team champions. As far as the Intercontinental Championship, thank God Triple H saved uh, Walter. I still hate Goofer's name. I'd love to, I'm loving the fact that Imperium is definitely uh, back. But Walter right now has made the Intercontinental Championship matter the most since I think the Miss, in my opinion. I feel it can go an incredibly long run with it. I feel he's just starting with it. So I'm curious who they will set up for him in 2023 and if the Intercontinental Championship will be a main focus at next year's WrestleMania. When WrestleMania goes Hollywood, we still have no idea what sort of vignettes are in store or honestly what the car is going to look like as it will be a two-night event. But I've really enjoyed what WWE has offered lately from a premium live event standpoint, despite the fact we don't have another premium live event to the Royal Rumble, there was no December show. And I feel like WWE is going in the right direction. Now, it looks like as far as this global localization, Triple H now trying to bring that to the forefront. You got Shinsuke Nakamura facing uh, the Ka- Kaiji Moodle, pro wrestling Noah just mere hours away. You have the Good Bros, one of them, of course, the never weight champion, going to defend it at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. And you just had one half of the Triple A Tag Team Champions beat FTR, spoiler alert, uh, Dragon Lee, confirmed that he signed with NXT. So again, WWE really trying to expand their brand from the main standpoint. Raw just needs to get that central championship and have their captain at the forefront, in my opinion. As far as uh, NXT, I'll be brief. It's not my NXT, but it's better than what it used to be after the black and gold was no more. I definitely have to say that um, Deadline pleasantly uh, surprised me. Too bad Braun Breaker and Apollo Crews got kind of the shaft in the booking, but I really did enjoy the first ever Iron Survivor challenges. It was a different take on a gauntlet scramble, and whoever heard of a match with a clock going up, like in a sport like soccer. I I will say this. I'm so happy to see Roxanne, the prodigy, rise to promise and is now the new NXT Women's Champion. That just warms my heart because that tells me you truly are putting focus in the great professional wrestlers seeing all this nxt uk town in flux with the fact that i have no idea what nxt europe is going to be to come in 2023 isla dawn aloy valkyrie katie ray we haven't seen tyler Bates since worlds collide which still kind of baffles me uh jordan devlin axiom of course the former uh, a kid one half of the hottest tag team under the sun uh oliver carter among others it definitely has helped with this uh, redefined NXT uh, ecosystem, and Braun Breaker has been the uh, constant. I honestly don't think he's going to lose that title until Stan Deliver, and they have to find the right guy for it. If Carmelo Hayes isn't going up to the roster, he should be the guy in place now as the next NXT World Champion, in my opinion. Although I know Grayson Waller will face uh, Braun Breaker next at New Year's uh, Evil. But I will say this, my uh, favorite show, I don't really have a favorite NXT show, But I think Deadline was a nice way to put a bow on this year. And I think I did enjoy it the most, top to bottom. But favorite NXT match this year? It was Halloween Havoc, Triple Threat, Jordan Devlin, Ela Dragunov, who I believe is still injured, and uh, Braun Breaker. Not only did it truly define what a Triple S was supposed to be, nonstop action to every person for themselves, take advantage of the opportunity, it could have gone truly any person's way. I still feel like Ela Dragunov should have been the NXT champion, but that's just a whole uh, different perspective. And as far as what happened with Mandy Rose, bullshit. And I truly hope that that does get corrected. But as long as she's happy and profitable, so that matters. At the end of the day, is a result-driven industry. Checks and championships. But if you're not making enough money there, then you pursue other third-party uh, opportunities. Or make the best of your own opportunity and hope that people actually, you know, trust and respect you for doing that and don't abuse it. But again, it is what it is in this world. 
So yeah, as far as 2023, uh, Carmelo Hayes becomes NXT champion. I feel Roxanne Perez is going to surpass Mandy Rose's reign. She has that much potential. And with the depth of their women's roster, which I give, will give NXT credit, incredible depth of quality, talent of variety in the roster. And as far as the tag team championships, ay, 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 ay. well, I guess New Day will be down there in a mentorship role for as long as need be. And we'll see what sort of tag team can be just as entertaining and dominating as them to take over and to see how far growth with the rock starter will be in a schism. I'm very curious to see when she might even be pushed towards in ring action and what her first program could be. As far as uh, other takeaways, it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, NXT is perceived on the road. Now they're going to be back on the road at Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe for their first NXT premium live event, which will be uh, the vengeance day. So we'll see uh, what's ahead, but I will say this. The white and gold is not the black and gold, but it's also, thankfully, not 2.0. It's okay. And I will continue uh, following it. Oh, and I guess I really didn't give a perspective on the uh, SmackDown side of things, uh, did I? Well, now that Charlotte's back in the fray, uh, well, who could beat Charlotte, right? Because Charlotte has to have the championship. As far as uh, tag team, we already know about the USOs, and I guess I really didn't talk about the United States one. Who's the United States champion again? Oh, yeah, Austin Fury. Uh, we'll see how far this character goes. I feel like right now he's kind of an afterthought, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. And Raw right now, the only thing that really has any, like, direction is Rhea Ripley and maybe Finn Balor. And I feel Rhea Ripley may challenge Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship, which I think would be a very cool program. Although she doesn't need the championship, so I do wonder if you do something else. So we'll see what happens, what they might have planned for Royal Rumble. Now we know Alexa Bliss is slowly laying him back in. We'll see how that all plays out uh, too. And I'm so glad to see the Red Nicky Cross back. But overall, the WWE ecosystem, I find it better. And I'm looking forward towards what's ahead for it in 2023. I'm still not watching Raw or SmackDown weekly because Raw is still too long and SmackDown, I don't have Fox. But I'll always be Team Blue for life out of the two because SmackDown focuses more on wrestling. I only find so much of Raw actually entertaining. I'm just saying. All right. Well, as we move on from there, let's go ahead and look back at Impact Wrestling, shall we? Because for me, Impact Wrestling celebrating their uh, 20th year, I thought they had a really good year. I mean, there was definitely a bit of nostalgia that we went into play. There's no doubt about that. They still have uh, Tommy Dreamer still uh, back into uh, things. But for me, every monthly Impact Plus special gave me a memorable match to really take away. And honestly, the most underrated wrestlers of the year probably are from Impact Wrestling. I mean, Josh Alexander finally claiming the Impact World Championship back at uh, Rebellion Against Moose. And he's been the Iron Man of Impact Wrestling, I would say, of the industry. Classic after classic after classic after classic going the uh, distance. He's faced the likes of Alex Shelley, Frankie Kazarian, Eddie Edwards, Joe Doring, and most recently to a near six minute draw on TV, Speedball Mike Bailey. So... I feel that Josh Alexander definitely has been Impact Wrestling uh, MVP, but kudos to Moose, always making sure that it's something about him. The I Don't Know More program with the uh, Ring of Honor Renegades was an interesting sprint, and then Bullet Club, of course, coming into fray, creating its own like little war inside Impact Wrestling. It was a fun program, too, different dynamics. We saw Ace Austin join uh, Bullet Club this year. Ace Austin, Chris Bay, they're coming together as a tag team. Morrison Machine Guns now three-time Impact Tag Team Champions. Jordan and Grace makes history not once again just as Nagas Champion, but first ever Queen of the Mountain. She was also the uh, first ever uh, digital media champion, I believe. So, And, of course, I still believe she is still the main event and the standard right now, the Knockouts division. Long may she reign. Deanna Peraza. We have Vex and Chelsea Green short run as a Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champions. This new direction of character development with Jessica Havoc where she's sick. And now that we have the Death Dolls as the Nagas Tag Team Champions, again, Impact Wrestling seems to be the only company to know what to do with women for the most part. Not just in singles, but in tag direction. Taya Valkyrie back in uh, Impact Wrestling was definitely a pleasant uh, surprise. We've seen how far Mickey James has come, and Mickey James might be facing her uh, last match, come a hard to kill, where it's title or nothing. So happy to see Killer Kelly back in the industry. Finally saw Kylan King made her way to the Impact Zone. I want to see Kylan King challenge for the Knockouts Championship 2023. There, I said it. But again, mental health is important. So, Killer Kelly, if you are taking care of yourself again, please uh, take care. 
X Vision continues to be the brand that literally has no limits. Speedball Mike Billy, one of the most phenomenal X Vision champions I've seen in a long time. Nine defense running streak. And honestly, classic after classic after classic. I still think him versus Trey is probably my X Division match of the year. Back it against all odds. Now, Trey, once again, X Division champion, a new face of the title and the division with a new attitude. And we'll see how far uh, that takes him. Interesting seeing Trey as a heel, to say the least, uh, for once. As far as uh, other things, Joe Henry, now part of me back wrestling, I think is pretty funny. I guess he and Moose are going to have a program with the Digital Media uh, Championship. And Overall, when it comes to commentary, I feel they got the perfect balance there with Matthew Raywald and Tom Hannigan. It probably is my favorite commentary duo right now in all things wrestling. So overall, every show was definitely something notable and uh, worthwhile. They did look back at the retrospective nostalgia. They did bring back some gimmicks, maybe some better off left forgotten. And they still keep moving forward. But having Bully Ray now with Josh Alexander in the Impact World Championship program, I find very weird. And I shudder to think what could happen if Bully Ray once again did become the Impact World Champion. I still think, and this is my takes uh, going into 2023, Steve Macklin will not only challenge for the Impact World Championship, he will become World Champion by the end of next year. I do think they might eventually run back Deanna Perrazzo as the Knockouts Champion. And as far as the Knockouts Tag Team Championships go, hmm... How many times has Tasha Steele's Ben Evans get a chance for Ben Evans finally eats Tasha Steele's and I'm happy because I feel Ben Evans has potential as a singles breakout. And honestly, I would love to see Ben Evans try and go after the Knockouts Championship herself. People to also watch out for, I definitely would watch uh, Deshelle Shaw. People might be, may have had our one chance already at the Impact World Championship, but he's a future Impact World Champion. There is no doubt about that. And I do feel like Kazaria will come back because he still needs to win the big one. And I see he's coming back to maybe get that chance again. I really do hope Eric Zarin finally wins the big one. Because I feel like he uh, deserves to. Former multiple-time uh, exhibition champion in uh, his own right. So seeing people come and go. Again, Impact Wrestling. They truly are the NECA of the professional wrestling multiverse. You come in through there. Or you take a step through there. And you end up being somewhere else. But Impact Wrestling. The TNA. Whatever you want to call it has been a stepping stone of the industry for literally 20 years. I can't wait to see what they got ahead in their uh, 21st. And congrats again to Naga of the Year, Jordan Grace, uh, Naga's Tag Team of the Year, uh, Death Dolls, x Vision Star, Speed of Mike Bailey, uh, Male Superstar of the Year, of course, uh, Josh Alexander, person to watch out for, Behem de Guncher, which I find rather surprising, but Okay, yeah, he did have a good ladder match, and that gargoyle spirit definitely has uh, helped him in uh, some ways. And, of course, match of the year was Speedball, Mike Bailey versus Josh Alexander, 59 minutes and, I believe, 37 seconds on Impact TV, of all things. Just saying. So, I'm looking forward to what's ahead in Impact Wrestling's uh, 2023, to say the least. And you can stay tuned for more coverage from me and Jerry of A Thousand Names, the simple, impactful duo, and the restart of the Impact Wrestling Predictions League for 2023 as well. All right. Now, I know I didn't really do a whole lot with it, but again, nostalgia and history needs to be honored, needs to be respected, and why there has been political controversy abound, especially with the current setting of the ecosystem. I do want to give some simple thoughts towards the NWA, where I say that, again, the constant Camille 1X for a reason. She is the person to watch in the National Wrestling Alliance. I think Nick Aldis for his run with the uh, Real World's Championship. Uh, Trevor Murdoch showed a lot of heart. Of course, goes all the way back to his training with Harley Race. Having Tyrus as champion now is weird, but okay. And again, carry more in generational uh, talent going up there. Rock and roll is on forever. Homicide had a incredible run, though, with the uh, junior heavyweight uh, championship. Got to give him uh, credit. I feel that the Hawks boys will get the uh, NWA World Tag Team Champions eventually. But honestly, I'm just waiting for FTR to show up and get these titles. They literally have held every titles except for these. So, again, as far as my uh, takeaways, it's been good. It's definitely something to watch, but it's weird right now how it's set up. And I still think that despite what they say about the women, they have a lot of karate women there with Maddie, Wazowski, uh, Missa Kate, of course, pretty empowered. So glad to see Kenzie Page finally with her first championship as a tag team, of course, with uh, Ella Envy, pretty empowered. I feel the Hex will definitely get another chance uh, against that. Surprisingly, Chelsea Green, well, she might be back to WWE. We'll see what happens. I mean, Emma came back for Pete's sake, right? <laughs> 
So, yeah, I guess my biggest takeaways is Tom Lammer will be NWA World Champion in 2023, while Camille is still with the Burke. I feel 1X at this point is going to surpass Jazz's record. And that's really all I got to say about that. And you can stay tuned for me and Jeff keeping you uh, posted for that. And if you haven't already, follow Jeff Meacham on the Jeff Meacham Network on social media platforms and support the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. Okay, why don't we go ahead and briefly uh, talk about NJPW because when it comes to uh, NJPW, they've had a very interesting year in their own right, celebrating 50 years. Of course, this company founded by Antonio Anoki, Ichi Nisanta, RIP, by the way, uh, definitely was founded on strong spirits and strong style. And we've seen the likes of great legends like Tetsuya Fujiyama even be involved here on uh, multiple shows. We saw the first Wrestle Kingdom across three days with the setup of Pro Wrestling and, and NJPW. And why it was mostly tag team showcases, it was something to behold. Uh, Kaiji Mudo, Great Muda, has now shown up across NJPW. And Kaiji Mudo will be in his last NJPW match at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. We, of course, saw the return of the Great Muda. And somehow he and Yano are on the same page. We've seen the rise of a great tag team, multiple tag teams, out of the United Empire. Of course, we have a uh, current catch two and two. I'm, of course, talking about Francisco Akira, the Fireball, and TJP, IWGP, uh, heavyweight, junior heavyweight tag team champion, excuse me. We've seen how close Ozzy Open has become, but Ozzy Open, they are one of the best tag teams of the last five years for a reason. They will have their moment. Great talk on all hell. And Jeff Cobb, former IWGP heavyweight tag team champions, they had a, a good run there. We've seen the Switchblade, Jay White, the Catalyst, once again become IWGP World Heavyweight Champion now, literally completing the Grand Slam more than anybody after uh, beating Kazushka Okada at, uh, I think it was Dominion? Yeah, Dominion. <clears throat> and we've seen how much Bullet Club's ever-rising influence has spanned across, again, the entire wrestling industry. Every company, in some facet, has some sort of Bullet Club member or influence in it. And that is extremely crazy, to say the least. Of course, we all saw the very beginning of the year, Will Ospreay, he was humbled by Okada, Okada winning against Shigeru Takagi and Will Ospreay back at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Zack Sabre Jr. with a New Japan Cup, falling short once again, Skushiko Okada at Hyper Battle. G1 Climax 3 with a different take with four blocks of participants, and why it was definitely more confusing and difficult to keep up with. I kind of like what it brought because each block did give us a different feeling and style competitors. Speaking of style competitors, with the borders more open now, we saw more competitors like likes of Jonah, TMDK. We saw Tom Lawler. We saw Lance Archer make his return, which I thought was pretty cool. We saw rising up-and-comers like uh, David Finley really own their uh, debut. And ELP going from junior heavyweight to heavyweight to the U.S. say the least. And this G1 Climax finale definitely made up for uh, last year, thankfully, to uh, say the least. Of course, we saw Leo Rush now part of uh, NJPW, part of Chaos, new Rapongi team. As Joe now is a four-time uh, World Best Super Juniors World Tag League winner. And Fishman, for the second time in a row, they won the uh, World Tag League. And both those teams respectively, man, Chaos has been on a roll, huh? We'll be involved at Russell Keenum, challenging for Tag Team Gold. Neverweight Championship still doesn't matter. And won't matter until it's back on the likes of Shingo Takagi or Jeff Cobb or Tomer Ishii, just saying. Kasuhiro Shibata, we know he can go. He's had a couple of uh, exhibitions. It was really curious to see how he and Renderita will work at Wrestle Kingdom, but that was actually really awesome. And I can't wait to see when he's back in uh, action again. And besides that, we've seen how much further now the partnership with Stardom and NJPW have come together back at the historic crossover, which was definitely one of the most memorable shows, to uh, say the least. Oh, and as far as my show of the year for NJPW, when it comes to big event schedule, I look at the whole uh, top-to-bottom uh, dynamic. Will Ospreay ran with the IWGB United States Championship after uh, it was vacated. Man, that title has had some ups and downs. I think for me, my show, hmm, this is tricky. I think I'm going to go with, yeah, I got to. I'm going to go with the crossover because, again, it combined two of the strongest professional wrestling companies on the planet, gave some unique alliances and dynamics. And the women, they wanted to fight the men. I, I kind of wish that happened. And honestly, now I just want to see Mobile Tommy versus Taiji. <clears throat> so that's just some of my thoughts. As far as 2023, I think Okada is getting the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship back. And by the way, Forbidden Door, 
incredible crossover pay-per-view. Can't wait to see that again in 2023. Curious now if uh, the so-called second day of Wrestle Kingdom will be its own version of that headline more, particularly by NJPW. Just saying. But uh, that being said, IGP Women's Championship has been reduced. First ever champion, of course, is Kyrie, one of the original three daughters of stardom, now back at NJPW stardom uh, forefront. Uh, overall, yeah, like I said, it's been a pretty interesting year for NJPW, celebrating history and making much more of it, too. Uh, House of Torture still exists, which still sucks, but it is what it is. And I still think the six minute away championships don't matter. Uh, so that's really all I got to say about that. And strong has been what a show is strong introducing tag team championships, which were first won by Aussie Open and now being held by Moyes and Machine Guns, who are again our three time impact tag team champions, but also now the second ever strong tag team champions, too. So curious what their 2023 is going to involve as well. I don't like the idea so much if everybody have a multiple belts because I feel it just causes more confusion. Just saying. So as far as 2023, yeah, Okada gets the world championship back. Uh, Neverweight championship. I think Tomatonga doing a Jedi by Bullet Club. This will be his new direction. And Tomatonga has really shined since joining uh, Huntai. And as far as everything else, that's still the tricky part. FTR, of course, the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. We'll see him defend those against uh, Bishamon at Wrestle Kingdom. It, can Bishamon get it done again? Can the uh, charm continue with the winners of the World Tag League going on to win the Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, it seems. It's almost like statistics shows like it's almost uh, going to happen, right? I, I, I don't know necessarily for sure. <clears throat> and as far as the junior heavyweight, uh, we'll see how far Leo Rush goes as part of chaos. Seems like he has a newfound uh, leash on life in uh, wrestling. And I think Yo and him can probably do it. But again, United Empire, they already had a really rough Wrestle Kingdom uh, this year. I don't know necessarily if they should have the same thing come uh, next year, but we'll see. And again, Tomatonga, get that title off Carl Anderson. So as far as that goes, stay tuned again because Wrestle Kingdom is back to its natural format. Single day only, January 4th, as far as the main show goes. The second day in Yokohama Arena later on that month, no idea what to expect. But yeah, that's really all I got to uh, say about that. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit now about Stardom when it comes to their year, my takeaways, and what I might expect to come. So Stardom, of course, they celebrated their 11th year. And honestly, this year has been sent around, I feel like, a few particular people. Starlight Kido, of course, has really come into her own part of the way to tie, not only starting off with that tag exhibition at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. She, this year, has been goddess of Stardom Tag Team Champion, High speed champion, and she came very close to uh, winning uh, either the uh, excuse me the five star grand prix. Yeah, she's also an artist of stardom champion. She was so kudos to her for the year that uh, she had and her on uh, Momo Watanabe, Black Desire. <clears throat> but yeah, Sarah Kamatani, of course, who literally has spent the entire year still holding the white belt. Now I believe twelve defenses, looking to surpass Momo Watanabe's record again. Really coming into her own, showing her confidence. Queen's Quest. And, of course, says I am stardom. I truly believe that she is that. Tam Nakano, rough end to last year, being humbled, giving the white belt to Sayaka Matani, and losing the Tag Team Championships part of Mita to uh, you and uh, Nene Haganishi at uh, Dream Queendom 2. Damn. Kawhi Q is one of the Cosmos, has had a rough year, to uh, say the least. I'm not sure how he bounces back from this, despite the fact she's going to face her fellow uh, white pirate princess uh, at or White Princess Knight, I forget the tag team dynamic they have when Kyrie returned, at Wrestle Kingdom for the IGP Women's Championship. I gotta imagine she's gotta try and get focused on that, but I don't know how she's going to. But uh, also, Tommy Hayashita, she just shows why she is that incredible of an athlete. The personality, the match quality, the variety. She truly is stardom's like leader. She is the Tanahashi of stardom. Despite the fact Mayu Itani is the icon and Zombie Itani came very close in the uh, five star Grand Prix as well. But if I could sum up this year pretty briefly for stardom, it was owned by two people particularly. When we watched their journey, we watched their exhibitions, we watched their matches. Julia of Donald Mundo and the former Donald Mundo. 
well, pretty much lieutenant, forward slash creator of God's Eye, Siri. For Julia, this year was about finding herself, reassuring herself, making sure that she truly wanted to do this and can do this after the injury she faced uh, last year. And of course, facing ghosts for a past with prominence invading uh, stardom and ending the year as the new artist of uh, stardom champions. Congratulations to Risa Sierra, uh, Suzu Suzuki, and uh, uh, sorry, I can't remember the other person's name, particularly because those two have been crazier and also really have owned uh, the year. But also, of course, Julia having great matches with Lexi Tim Nakano. Very personal battle. I feel like the Starlight Kid literally ripping the mask off her face. And overall, of course, winning the Fire Star Grand Prix. And we saw what that led to. She also was involved with the historic crossover with Zack Sabre Jr. as part of Zack Sabre Julia against Filthy Tom Lawler and Siri. Literally, these two have followed their entire career growth and spans since 2020 since being a part of stardom. You look at Siri, who, of course, started God's Eye and has, of course, defended this title against her old constituents, including uh, Mariah, who became part of God's Eye, also won the Cinderella Tournament this year. Congratulations to her. We also saw her challenge for the uh, White Belt earlier uh, this year, uh, too. And, of course, uh, Siri has been voted the number one wrestler as far as PWI 150, as well as uh, Tokyo Pro Sports Female Wrestler of the Year. Kudos to her. She's, of course, defended this title against the likes of Wilma Watanabe, Risa Sierra, literally choking the life out of her. Jesus. Uh, of course, the returning veteran, uh, Nane, as I alluded to earlier. Utami Hayashita, uh, once again, uh, successfully, among so many other incredible uh, defenses, before finally seeing how far Julia and her have come at Dream Kingdom 2, for Julia to finally become the World of Stardom champion in what was an absolutely emotionally humbling full circle type retrospective match for both these incredible professional wrestlers so overall again started like can incredible year sire kamatani still white belt champion really has come into her own found that new confidence especially to go on against Kyrie in a 30-minute draw Kyrie, of course returning back to stardom one of the original three daughters of a uh, stardom her and my tommy being in the finals of the crossover becoming the igp Women's champion, the first one, and having a nice 50 minutes match with Tommy Ayashita leaves a lot to be desired between maybe her and Kyrie going after each other for the belt. But also, Julia even mentioned she's never faced with Tommy one on one. Maybe with Tommy goes after Julia for the uh, red belt. The SWA championship currently being vacated. The Triangle Derby that's ahead that will be a focus primarily for the artists of stardom uh, championships. Prominence and colors coming into uh, the stardom ecosystem and challenging for titles. Where prominence again are the RS Stardom Championships and Julia of uh, Donald Del Mundo, who lost not to Poi, but again, she gained my Sakurai uh, last year. It's been a crazy year for stardom, but once again, they are the leaders of women's professional uh, wrestling. And of course, end the year with Mina Shirakawa saying Pink Boogie's over and starting her own group, bringing back former stardom player Zaya Brookside. It's going to be interesting to see what's ahead and if we are going to get any more factions, Lord help us, or turns and joins next year in 2023 as well. Again, thank you, Siri. Arigato. Uh, congratulations to Julia, who will head in 2023 now as the World of Stardom Champion. Sarah Kamatai made the whole year through and is still the uh, wonder of Stardom Champion. We have a new future of Stardom Champion, Amin Sarai of uh, Gazai, beating uh, Hanan. So nice to see Hazuki back. She is wild heart, but she is incredible. I thought she had an amazing gear. And honestly, I would love to see her maybe challenge for the uh, white belt. Of course, Asume and her immortal rival Starlight Kid had a great match earlier this year. And Asume now the still high-speed champion. Of course, the daughter of high-speed, rightfully named, of uh, Queen's Quest. And we have new guys with Stardom Tap Champs. We'll see if Mitar can bounce back, particularly if Tam Nakano can have a better 2023 because Tam and Natsupoi's rivalry definitely brought out the best and the worst in each other. Hence why they came together to, in their own way, start a revolution. Why others, they're out there to create and fulfill a dream. We'll see what's ahead for everybody in stardom as well. Now that we have, I guess, technically seven factions. I don't know if Club Mina is necessarily a faction of its own to grow. Or just something that Mina is doing for herself. As Mina Shirakawa, after nearly losing her teeth and her jaw... But see how far she came to getting the white belt. Clearly has aspirations to go after that. And Saya wants to go after Mina as well. Have her face for that belt again. I feel like Mina could be the next wonder of stardom champion. As far as world stardom, Julia came a long way to get there. 
We're going to see now how far you can go now that you are there. And something tells me her and Siri will face off again for that belt. I'm curious to see how much more Lady C grows as well. She's definitely been uh, impressing me. So watch out for Stardom, folks. And if you haven't already, check out their YouTube channel. Check out the Stardom World Service. Again, there is no language barriers when it comes to professional wrestling. But Stardom is the company to watch in 2023. Mark my words. So I want to just give a couple of simple takes for the independent uh, side of things. When I think about those that really rise, come into their own stars to uh, watch out for. And I feel like companies to uh, watch out for, uh, too. Uh, Deadlock Pro Wrestling has definitely shown how much of a love they have for the Joshi Pro Japanese uh, strong style with the likes of uh, Emi Sakura, Jungle Kion, the former Jungle Kion, of course, being there too and being involved in uh, GCW. It's been a great hybrid environment with some great strong style uh, action, to uh, say the least. Congratulations to Bert Vixen, the first ever inaugural Defy Women's Champion. Game on. She's also has been involved most recently in uh, AEW. I also want to give a shout out to Kylan King, who's definitely been my favorite female to watch grow and continue to move forward. Wherever she can, she's going to do her thing. Just give her a chance. She's ready for the next bout. Doesn't look back. Just keeps going forward. Kylan King, of course, who is the inaugural champion of an all women's promotion, CCW. Thank you to Capital Championship Wrestling. That's been a great promotion to watch out for. And I will continue to watch out for you in 2023. Rega Transformer, inaugural uh, tag team champions, Kayla Sprocks, former network champion, beat up on Star. She was crazy. But Kyle King, I believe, now has three or four uh, titles, so uh, good for her. Of course, she challenged for the uh, Berg. She had finally made the Impact Zone. I hope that she gets more mixed up with the Knockouts. AR Fox, who just recently came on to the AEW scene now, is All Elite. Acton Andretti, who came into the All Elite scene now, who is uh, All Elite. Curious what else they're going to do now that Dark's back in the Universal area. Uh, as far as the NWA, Kerry Morton, he showed that he can beat Homicide. We're going to see how far he can carry uh, that title. I definitely watched the uh, Hawk Boys, and with the uh, Fale Dojo now being more involved in NJPW, might be something to uh, watch out for um, as well. But again, more particularly, I just want to give a major thank you to Deadlock Pro Wrestling and Capital Championship Wrestling, my sleeper promotions that I've enjoyed thoroughly for the year 2022. Shout out to Wrestling Revolver as well, Semi Collins promotion, and House of Glory. They've had some uh, great matches as well. Again, I look at more wrestling than I can uh, keep up with. So if you can, go check out some of their great matches and great action too. And we've seen how much the rosters interchange with the other companies. Where again, well, I guess now the Triple H is in charge. And maybe even in WWE, there really is no barrier to where you can go, where you can work, where you can be booked to a degree too. And of course, Triple A, they're trying to get things back together. Conan Bacon, the mixed tag team champions of Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello. Uh, congrats, by the way, to their marriage this year. And, of course, we had new uh, AAA Tag Team Champions. As FTR, they might finally be looking to slow it down, which, honestly, I wouldn't blame them. But there still is two companies they have yet to invade for Tag Team Gold, and you know what I'm talking about, Impact and NWA. FTR, just saying, you guys are still top, but you're not done yet. Top guys for life. All right. Now, I could probably separate these two, but I'm not going to because they did come underneath uh, the same umbrella, one and the same. So let's go ahead and talk about my favorite promotion to have watched over all this year, despite the political controversy bullshit. AEW. Where to begin? Where to begin? Holy hell. Well. Funda Rosa La Mera, La, La Mera Mera, of course, she became the AEW Women's World Champion against that breaker DMD inside a steel cage. AEW Revolution was nearly a perfect pay-per-view, except for the fact that they didn't pull the trigger on Funda Rosa there, which honestly is probably the only blemish there. We've seen the likes of Keith Lee, Swerve, Tony Storm, Soraya, just to name a few. Action Andretti, of course. AR Fox, that I alluded to earlier, now be a part of of the AEW ecosystem, Lord William Regal for a short sprint and the formation of the Blackpool Comic Club, the most influential faction of professional wrestling. We've also seen the rise, the Jericho PJ Society, a different take on the epitome of sports entertainers. And of course, we've seen Jay Cargill. She became the inaugural TBS champion since AEW moved to TBS, still undefeated, still holding the title. Unfortunately, there was a list of injuries that definitely affected the AEW environment that definitely where they had to change gears. Of course, I'm talking about the likes, particularly of Chris Statlander, Jit Leader Courage, where the women's uh, division has suffered the most when it came to injuries. And I particularly hope those two get well soon. 
We, of course, also saw the likes of uh, Jeff Hardy come into play, but he's taking care of himself hopefully the right way. So maybe when he comes back, he'll be back to normal. As we move away from our revolution and kept going down for the gear, there were so many theme shows. There was such crazy dynamic. We saw the Owen Invitational, where we saw that somehow AEW gained the trust of the Hart family, particularly the late great wife, of course, the late great Owen Hart. Probably botch. And we saw the Owen tournament where Adam Cohen, Deborah and DMD, they won their respective uh, brackets together. We saw Anarchy in the Arena. That was anything but entertaining. It was downright brutal, ballistic, and crazy. CM Punk became champion. CM Punk fell off as champion. CM Punk became champion. And Jure came into play. He shot it all out there about his feelings on everybody on Amiya Scrum and hasn't been seen since. Inauguration of the AWR Atlantic Championship and the Trios Championships. We saw the return of Lion Heart. We've seen the rise of the likes of Willa Yuda, uh, Jamie Hayter, uh, Daniel Garcia, just to name a few. We've seen the arrival of the likes of Stokely, Athena, and others as well, too. MJF, the original pillar of AEW, finally became the AEW World Champion, and he's already had a great reign of terror to start with, with his first defense against Azuki Starks, which looks like they're finally putting the rocket on him to maybe one of the cup people in this company at the forefront. Developments with Team Taz being diminished, Hook FTW champion still undefeated. We've seen Powerhouse Hobbs and how he's grown into a monster of his own right. Christian Cage manipulating and destroying Jurassic Express. Why making Jungle Boy Jack Perry into a man his own right? Luchasaurus, of course, going into a different evolution, dark evolution, and giving us one of the craziest steel cage matches I've ever seen in my life. We saw the incredible Forbidden Door pay-per-view, despite all the injuries and circumstances as well. It was a crossover between NJPW and AEW, where we saw the likes of, again, Tony Storm, Joji Pro, former Stardom alumni, Go Strong Style against uh, Funda Rosa. We saw Tanahashi challenge John Moxley, one of the only people John Moxley had yet to face in NJPW. We saw the return of Suzuki, Shota Umino, Shooter, a.k.a. Roughneck. We saw the United Empire invade AEW, not only involved in the Trios tournament, but given a sleeper match of the year in Orange Cassidy versus Velocity. That was extremely entertaining. Edge of your seat, crazy comedy, gold, fun, competitive. Katsura Shibata, of course, made his way. Bullet Club, Shingo Takagi. And Forbidden Door just left us wanting so much more for this idea of crossover interpromotional warfare. With the likes of Utami Hayashita even talking about, hey, Abaddon, I see you. You see me. Let's do it. Abaddon versus Utami Hayashita? What? I actually like the aspect of that match, just saying. Although Rico, though, she was formerly involved at one point, and Rico and Atami, Atami thinks that Rico's cute at one point, when well, she still does, so that could be a thing there, too. <clears throat> Finally, AEW went over to the West Coast and Canada, eh? Also, Renee Paquette became uh, all lead and definitely was a shot of adrenaline that the backstage environment, the broadcast side of things, definitely needed with her years of experience and uh, professionalism. <clears throat> we also, of course, saw, like I said, the uh, Trios Championships, and we have the Best of Seven Series currently going on that brought the NBA Tonight type vibes back from the 1990s and has been anything but lazy because it has been extremely competitive. We've seen how these teams are trying to raise the bar with the insanity that they're willing to do against each other as we go into Game 7. I finally saw the Fabulous Forum, one of their highlight shows of the year, MJF's realistic, unscripted pipe bomb, leaving... But apparently at All Out, the Devil came back, won the uh, chip, and of course we saw MJF finally win the title at uh, Full Gear. As far as AEW All Out, Jamie Hayter, we saw her moment to break out, and we've seen what she's done with it, and now she's finally the AEW Women's World Champion. We saw the acclaim come to fruition. They made the audience believe in them, developed their own gimmick, scissoring, which is as organic as a thing as possible, it seems. That's crazy to think about. And, of course, they're the AW World Tag Team uh, Champions. And we've seen also Ring of Honor rebirth with three incredible pay-per-views. And, of course, the Tag Team Rivalry of the Year, especially for us for me, FTR and the Briscoes. That finally culminated in a double dog car match for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships that the Briscoes won and became 13-time champs. And at this point, I think our sign, and we know Ring of Honor will get a soft reboot next year as part of Honor Club. And, of course, Athena, now is the new Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, finding herself before WWE made her lose what she was, her words, 
in a very aggressive identity, beating Mercedes Martinez, who, of course, won the inaugural Ring of Honor Women's Championship against Deanna Perrazzo, who made events in an AEW Dynamite. And why several AEW Dynamites have been pay-per-view caliber, including Grand Slam, Quake at the Lake, we've seen Battle of the Belts, we've seen rising breakout stars newly signed like Konosuke Takeshka and Claudio Castanoli, and so much more. There has been, no doubt, endless moments, matches you can think about from All Elite Wrestling's 2022. Maybe they have too many belts, but again, I feel that's more of an industry problem at this point, too. Especially since KOW, KOPW has turned to a title. Just saying. But at least they're actually championships and not on freaking Velcro. So, here's my biggest things about AEW. My show of the year, it was a title between Full Gear and Forbidden Door. Both of them had their own meaning. But for me, every year I've noticed Full Gear, it's a combination, but it's also a preparation for what's to come. And right now, looking at this roster of current champions in AEW, most of them are AEW originals, including Orange Cassidy, who's been one of the most unique, unorthodox, whatever, champions ever I've seen. And that's some wild triple threat open challenge matches where he's essentially defended this title and also defended this title one on one. We've seen the rebirth of the Kip Saving character embrace the uh, change after going up against uh, Pac, who was the inaugural uh, champion. House of Black was on the rise. Julia Hart has redefined her identity as somebody that now literally represents the house, where the house always wins. And of course, we saw Cody give up the TNT Championship earlier this year with a break in a crazy ladder match against Sammy. And why Sammy has been at the breath of controversy, there is no doubt that Sammy has tremendous in-ring capability. We're seeing more of an in-depth focus on the women's division. Ana JAS, Ana J. We've seen her grow back into entertainer, character, something to behold. And the Dark Order has been diminishing and destroyed by the numbers, with President, of course, turning, literally betraying negative one and using that as heat, which is not a bad strategy, per se. So I look at AEW like this there is still room for improvement, clearly. And apparently, they're going to really try and kick things off the right way in 2023. New set. New theme, most likely. New AEW. Wednesday night still. AEW Dynamite. TBS. What awaits 2023? Well, for me, continuation of Jamie Hayter's incredible run of title matches. Carl Sheeta was a hell of a start. I can't wait to see who's next particularly. And I wonder if Jamie Hayter might even face somebody after being in door defending her title. Maybe somebody from stardom. I wouldn't mind seeing Ryuna Tsunami back either. <clears throat> uh, I definitely see Forbidden Door again. I really hope stardom's involved uh, this time. As far as the AWL Adventure Championship, Gibb Samian might surprise us. But right now, as far as we can take it off Orange Cassidy, it's a who's who. Darby Allen finally putting so many bitter rivalries this year behind him, including against Hollywood Page and Brody King. I feel he's going to become two-time TNT champion. Wardlow has definitely uh, ascended. Unfortunately, he's also hit rock bottom now, losing his hair and got freaking uh, injured. I feel like uh, Warlow is definitely going to maybe go after the AW World Championship because he makes history with MJF. With MJF now being the AW World Champion, seeing that list, MJF can have one of the longest, most lucrative, story-driven reigns in all of professional wrestling as champion. So I'm curious to see where this program with Brian Danielson goes and where he goes from here. Eddie Kingston is a sleeper for me to become an AEW champion in 2023. I think Eric's on point with that. I think that's going to uh, happen. With Soraya now part of AEW and a mystery part to come January 11th, we're just going to see who Soraya brings into her house. But since Soraya has been part of AEW, it's really been something special in the women's division. I'm not sure if Marina Shafir and uh, Nata Rosa going in different directions, but apparently Vicky has a uh, different outlook since Nata lost out against the TBS champion. I feel like they're still going to hold out for Chris Statlander to come back and take the title off of Jade Cargill at this point, unless they really go back to Jade's first rivalry and Red Velvet takes the title off her. As far as these trios titles go, it's so weird and fickle considering Kenny Omega is literally challenging for the IWGP United States Championship next week, Wednesday. But I kind of want to try to win and I wouldn't mind seeing somebody screw the elite. Uh, sleeper program. I want to see Butcher and the Blade and the Bunny. So happy to see Allie back. Yeah, Allie. Uh, so happy to see her back in wrestling. Highly underrated group, in my opinion. Great workers. I want to see them feud with the House of Black, but I'm curious where this Ortiz and A. Keen's program goes. That's clearly going to be the first thing going into uh, 
2023. Keith Lee now might break out as a single star. Now he and Swarm and Swarm are going are done. Ring of Honor has been a hell of a kickoff so far with three incredible uh, pay-per-views. They have their inaugural roster champions, Kyle Castanoli, Willard Yuta, Athena, and the Briscoes. So I think they're in very good shape. And of course, Samoa Joe adopting this king of television identity has been hilarious. But doing Darby Allen versus Joe 2 this soon and Darby Allen's hometown too, I think it's going to be Darby Allen's time again to be the TNT uh, champion. And as far as Grand Prix Society, this tease of Daniel Garcia and Simi Guevara, a little bit of fallout, I think is very well could happen. It could happen as soon as this match between Ricky Starks and Chris Jericho that will likely be uh, one of the key matches to look out for next week Wednesday on Dynamite. And of course, Revolution will be in the uh, Chase Arena and also AW goes to the Cow Palace. So I'm expecting some big, big stuff from the Mecca of professional wrestling into BW's welcome in. Of course, the Western side of things in California. But I honestly cannot wait for AEW more than anything else next year. Honestly, AEW every week leaves me wanting more. Makes me wonder who can rise and shine. Show up next on Dark. Dark Elevation. Make the way up from there. I'm just saying. So, and this Mogul Affiliates thing is weird to me. But Parker, eh, he could be a force to be reckoned with. But it depends on how he uh, improves his in quality. So, Overall, yeah, show of the year, full gear, second for Ben Dorp, but it's like 49-51. Jamie here is going to be my champion to watch uh, next year because I feel like she's going to be the champion that AEW has needed as an AEW original for the longest time since Hikaru Shida, if I'm perfectly honest. And they started off with these two one-on-one, and they went 20 minutes. Just saying. That's strong style, damn it. And shout out to BJ Whitmer, who has apparently been heavily influencing these uh, women's championship matches, including the one against uh, Tony Storm. So, uh, Kudos to him. Kudos to Kaskak. He could be an AEW All-Atlantic champion, in uh, my opinion. And as far as the Ring of Honor stuff, maybe now we'll finally see Ring of Honor and AEW completely separate when it comes to their title programs. Although the Swerve and you the match having a Rampage might lead me to believe that Battle of the Bells might have at least one Ring of Honor title on the line. And as far as the Tag Team Championships, the Acclaim, they are an organic gap, but top flight, they're the team to watch out for. We've seen them hang with OGK and beat them. And hang with Blackpool Comic Club, who, of course, talk about they are teachers that teach by violence. Thinking of violence, him and Adam Page, you better watch your mental health. So I got to say about that. Him and Adam Page, John Moxley to come, definitely rumored. Uh, rest of the year for AEW for me, John Moxley, bar none. Workhorse, encourager, the bright light. Guy who should have been on vacation, but like, okay, fine, I'll do this. He's the guy that literally held this company on his back. In its worst political highlight, why Chris Jarrett has been doing his best from a backstage standpoint, locker room esque uh, leader, and now has more creative direction. Hence, why we got Action and Dreading now part of uh, AEW. So, AEW is a show to watch out for. It's a company to watch out for. And again, only three years, folks. Only three years in this game. They've done a lot so far. And even with their fickleness and politics, I feel like they're finally getting some stuff right. And that's an important thing to see. Again, world champion, MJF, women's champion, Jamie Hayter, tag team champion, the acclaim, Atlantic champion, Orange Cassidy, trios champion so far, Dev Triangle. And overall, all AEW originals. So it's a really bright thing to see how many wrestlers they built as stars and how many still can be stars. Sign Sky Blue. So I gotta say. Also, Sky Blue versus the Bunny. Just saying. Do that program. Well, with that being said, I just wanted to just give out some simple tidbits, takeaways, thoughts, expectations, and overall outlooks. And when I look at the wrestling landscape of things, there's never been a better time to be a wrestling fan. It doesn't get simpler than that. So stay tuned, of course, for everything that's to come in all things wrestling as we head into 2023. And all I got to say in conclusion is thank you, 2022. But if you want to know more about me, Know this, for I am just a simple man and a lifelong fan of professional wrestling. Damn it. But I digress. It doesn't get simpler than that with me. Again, it's so simple. It really can't get any more simple, but that's the point. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and Foster1916 for all things wrestling. Shout out, of course, to my entire group of family on Twitter, ATW for life. Lex, have an incredible time at Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, stay tuned, of course, for the return of the Simply Predicting panels. They will be back, and it kicks off Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
with Wrestle Kingdom 17. And that'll just be a fun simply predicting exhibition as all the leagues, I assure you, will restart. It, of course, will start in January with both the Impact and WWE leagues. Impact Wrestling presenting their first preview of the year. Impact Wrestling hard to kill. Stay tuned for me and Jared with Thousand Names to be back to the simple, impactful duo, bringing you a highlight and an in look into this incredible car that's already being built. And, of course, WWE kicks off their 2023 with their first premium live event, the Royal Rumble, where we will once again see who starts their way into the main event of WrestleMania. So stay tuned for me with the No DQ panel. Of course, the horsemen of the No DQ Galaxy will be back here to give you our predictions and uh, outlooks too. And stay tuned. I'm going to be creating a couple of new things for this channel, including a, let's call it a horseman predictions discussion. Because we're doing our own Iron League across all these leagues in wrestling combined together. And we're going to talk about our favorite moments, our biggest highlights, score updates, and so much more. Me, Jeff Chadwick, Christopher Rods, and of course, Mark Griffith. So stay tuned for more on that. The All Elite League of 2023, of course, will kick off with AEW Revolution. Cindy, have an incredible time. So stay tuned, of course, for me and the All Elite panel. Who knows who they might be, of course, in 2023. And for me, simple predicting is about not just you on camera, because I know people are camera shy, but your voice, because your opinions matter. So if you want to join any of these live prediction panels, who most of the time, generally, they're going to happen 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that week of the pay-per-view or premium live event. Let me know. I would love to have your voice, your character on here, too. If you are an open-minded, kind, non-toxic, non-tribalistic individual, too. And again, thank you to 2022. Here is my rankings of my top 20 shows. You only can see uh, 19, I guess. Let me see if I can fix that. Nope, it's only 19. <laughs> Watch. Again, Full Gear, Forbidden Door, All Out, uh, Double or Nothing, Ring of Honor, Death for Dishonor, Ring of Honor Final Battle, Slammiversary, Overdrive, Impact Rebellion, AEW Revolution, Supercar of Honor, Wrestle Kingdom, Night 1, particularly first, and then uh, Night 2 uh, for me. Of course, Survivor Series War Games, The Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill, Clash of the Castle, and SummerSlam. Those are my top 19 shows of 2022 year. And you see the match highlights, especially of the matches that definitely peaked out to me the most. Just saying. Again, 2022. What a freaking crazy year professional wrestling. Stay tuned also for a simple review of the last Stardom show 2022. Of course, talking about Dream Kingdom 2. And as I alluded to, there's going to be a whole lot more simply predicting panels, a whole lot more fun discussions, and a whole lot more professional wrestling content, too, I assure you. But as always, as I conclude, there are no winners, no losers, no betters. Just fans with opinions for this passion we all share. And at the end of the day, folks, support one another, respect each other, protect your mentality, too, and just enjoy life and enjoy professional wrestling, too. It's as simple as that. And, of course, I'll be lending my voice across the Jet Mission Network Multiverse of Media. So stay tuned for continued coverage in all things wrestling with me, James Hubert, Jeff Meacham, Jeff Chadwick, Josh Mansfield, uh, and uh, 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 Mikey, the uh, movie star himself. And, of course, say yes to NoDQ and stay tuned to NoDQ. Of course, they have rescheduled now their reviews for Sunday night. I might be on those more often, so stay tuned for more on that as well. Again, please like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Thank you once again for tuning in. Hit the bell notification goes live on demand on this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Help me keep growing this YouTube community. Shout out to all 261 of you that's been with me so far on this YouTuber creator's journey. It's not laying up anytime soon, I assure you. And I hope to bring you more content and more wrestling positivity and fun too. Until next time, we are just merely, if you're here with me on the East Coast when I actually uh, just did this a couple of minutes ago because I recorded this. 9.36 p.m. East Standard Time. It is two hours and 23 minutes to the new year. And I got to prepare for a four-hour long open mic night. So find me over there if you can, if you're sober enough too. I have a little bit of my own bubbly, but not alcoholic, unfortunately. But it is what it is. Thank you again to everybody that's tuned in to the Simple YouTube channel. At some point, one way or another, during 2022, I truly thank you and appreciate all of you. I look forward to seeing you once again here in 2023. And whether or not the ATW uh, view gets rebooted or even the AEW Rampage recovery reviews or the Diamond recovery reviews too get rebooted, 
that remains to be seen and maintained. comes down to really time and my mentality. Until next time, as I always like to leave you with, this doesn't change, no matter if the year does. Make a positive impact in life and have a good night. Whether you are a sports entertainer food this or professional wrestling fan, know this is true. We all look at all things wrestling. But for me, on behalf of my entire family, we are ATW. And follow the entire W crew, if you can too. They're good people. Cindy, James, Eric, Megan, uh, Casey, I say Casey, and of course the King, my Ollie cohort for life, King Adrian, and the entire family. I would be here all night if I talked about all of them. JD, Kid Bandit, Nick Setters, Casey, just saying. Thank you all, my friends, and thank you, everybody, and thank you, professional wrestling. Damn it. And God bless it. Have a good night, folks. And seriously, go get yourself a little bit of bubbly. It's good for you.